How you doing guys? I'm Sean. And I'm Sheena and we're speaking up for the animals. In today's video we're going to be talking about a save that we did a couple of weeks ago where we bore witness to some pigs and also we're going to be talking about the current situation with COVID-19. Definitely and I say that I hope this find you all safe and well obviously yeah. depending on when you're watching this I hope we've got through it um, the best we can and spring this back to the animals because as, as animal rights and vegan activists here we're very frustrated that we're not able to get onto the streets and to do our activism. So many Absolutely. things have been cancelled. Yeah. Yeah. We normally would be doing a Cube of Truth maybe every fortnight yeah. at least um, amongst other activism and it just feels it feels quite difficult and frustrating not to be able to get out and, and speak up for the animals. We understand that there's a very serious issue around us at the moment but it's also very serious for the animals too and we're just trying our best to, to not forget them. Yeah, and probably do more online activism, but it's a, it's a dodgy one because we want to, as I say, look after, you know, the human animals, yeah. uh, but also at the same time let the human animals know that there's uh, non-human animals is is they're they're you know in a bad place, like they're losing their lives daily. Uh, they're in places of horrific conditions. Yeah. Um, when we went to see that. Uh, bear witness up in the save. Yeah, that was your first it's time. Heartbreaking. Yeah, it was my second time, but the first time I did it, we didn't get to stop the lorries. Mm -hmm. This time here, we actually did. There was an agreement in place. It was just heartbreaking. And I'm going to put wee video clips over the top of it and photographs and talk. We planned to do a video about it, but because of this current situation, it had to be put back. So how did you find it? Like, I thought it was heartbreaking. Well, the first... It was only my second time doing the save and the first thing that you notice is the intense smell from the trucks. I mean, it is just unbelievable. And we know that pigs are incredibly clean and intelligent animals and for them to be forced for the duration of their six month lives to be living in their own filth is completely against their nature. And so the first thing you notice is that they're covered in filth and that must be horrible for such a sentient being. And then the second thing is just the complete look of absolute despair yeah, in their eyes. Um, very, very powerful. Yeah, and the smell. But when you look at their wee eyes, mm -hmm. you can clearly see that there's there's a knowing there that they're familiar with what's happening. I, I believe they know what's exactly what's happening. You could say, well, they don't know what's around the corner, but there was something, when you were looking into their eyes, yeah, it was as if they were looking into your soul. I know. And it was heartbreaking, heart-wrenching. They'd given up. They'd given up, you know. Um, I think it's important as an activist, at first whenever I heard about doing saves, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do one. I thought I would not be able to control my emotions. Um, but I really think it's very vital work to go out and connect with the animals in their last moments. It might be difficult for us, but our footage that we can share can then translate to people that we know who then can understand and we can talk to them about how we felt and just hopefully and maybe they might try might get something from that i know two people personally that have said they have not eaten pork from seeing footage that i put up of my first save yeah. so you know it's all it's all relevant it's, it's all dance. important yeah and it's easy to sit and say well really you know they're still eating other animals and things like that but guys we have to look at the bigger picture here yeah uh, i'm sure your own journey to becoming vegan uh you know you might think it happened overnight but obviously it didn't you know what I mean? If it's your whole life, you've more than likely just like ourselves. It doesn't matter whether you're vegetarian or, you know, meat eater, eating animal flesh and the byproducts. The fact of the matter is, is that you became vegan the uh, same way we have. And I think it's important to, to keep putting the information out there. And if it gets somebody to start to look at one particular animal differently and to look at their food choices differently, then that's a start. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important, as Sheena says, or, is to keep sharing the information, to go out and bear witness and to let people see where their food's coming from. Yeah. Just looking at the, there's a wee cat, we're looking at the window, there's a wee cat jumping Not one of mine, not, not one, one of ours. Sheena has got um, three birds. <laughs> well, they've got me. Yeah, now your father is red. But that leads us nicely on to um, what is happening currently, and we can finger point or blame that it's from this animal or this country or whatever but the reality is we have seen with our own eyes the conditions that these animals are in yeah. and they are hotbeds of bug production and you know they're the animals are 
in their own dirt. And the animals that we consume here are full of antibiotics. They are constantly given antibiotics daily, which supposedly prevents infection. But as we know, these bugs and superbugs are mutating and they're becoming stronger. They're becoming antibiotic resistant. We shared an article on that on our Speaking Up for the Animals page the other day. These bugs are becoming antibiotic resistant, yeah. which means that the animals are very potentially carrying them from animal to animal. And now, as we have seen, from animal to human. So we now need to be thinking about I'm not saying veganism is a miraculous cure. You're going to eat a carrot and you're not going to get coronavirus. But we have to look at where these diseases are coming from, I believe. And highlighting it. And highlighting it. But also maybe thinking, do we really need these products in our life? Do we need to be consuming animals? Do we need to be eating animals that are living in such horrendous condition and losing their lives? Maybe now is the time to be thinking, is it a good time to go mm. vegan? Uh, the, the problem also with that is, is that because obviously we're, we're going through this section of road where people are fearful of losing loved ones, maybe their own selves, dying and family members and friends and having their res restrictions limited. It's difficult because you want to tell people that, yeah. but you also don't want them, oh, look, you typical vegans. Yeah. And the problem with pointing out the horrendous conditions that, you know, these beautiful sentient beings are going through, you're going to get some will say, but sure, my farmer, you know, we don't treat animals like that. We have a lot of, you know, free range and organic and grass fed animals. And look at these pigs here. They have plenty of space and they're clean. And you know, it's very possible that's the case. So we have to as activists to bring it back beyond the, you know, the, the dirt and the filth and say, yes, look at this, this is what's happening. But to bring it back to the sentience, mm -hmm. that we've got beautiful sentient beings. It doesn't matter whether they're knee deep in their own shit or they're in the overlooking fields and, and lovely mountains that we have to bring it back to the Sandians. And I think people may start to, yeah. to get that, do you think? They yeah, could? I hope so. And while we're both vegan for the animals, I think now with so many people concerned about their health, Play them. How, can we, how can we then translate that from what's happening to our health to the fact that it's very potentially from animals? And even if coronavirus isn't from animals, um, there's an estimate, but look at my notes here, but the American Heart Association says that 121.5 million adults have some form of heart disease in the US. That's nearly half of the adult population have some form of heart disease. And half of that, again, comes from the diet that you're eating. The same with diabetes. Most of that comes from the food that you're eating. And the majority of that food that gives you those problems are animal products. What they are recommending are plant-based foods to completely change your health. Now, that's not them giving out a vegan agenda or us giving out a vegan agenda. That's scientifically yeah. proven that those foods are going to make you healthier, boost your immune system, and give you a fighting chance against any disease, yeah. I think. Yeah, what, what would you think? I would be thinking along the lines of if people connected dots about their health, that they sort of don't take on board about the animals. And yes, we can get them on. So when somebody feels they're healthy, how do you get that person over? Mm. How would you get that person over? Like in other words, it's all right. Like if, if Joe Bloggs has, finds out they've got diabetes or they're borderline diabetes, they change their diet and they become vegan as a result of it. And the doctor says, okay, you're actually no longer yeah. at risk. What's stopping Joe Bloggs getting a burger yeah. made from animal parts? Well, hopefully now this whole shift of things that are happening in the world with us all having more time, with us all having maybe a tiny bit of fear and a tiny bit of anxiety, maybe it is going to stop and make us think, how can we be more compassionate? How can we live mm. better? How can we live kinder? And I'm just hoping that that doesn't just transcend to our immediate families. I'm hoping that it will transcend to the wider community, the wider countries, the world and obviously other species. I just can't imagine that, that we'll come out of this with less compassion. I know, I think so. I think I we'll come out with more. I'm I hoping, think we yeah. should. I, I think, think we so. will. So as activists, what do we do? We're trapped indoors. We can't get on the streets doing outreaches. We can't go to abattoirs and do the save movement and burn witness and yeah. other forms of activism, um, animal liberation and things like that. It has to be online mm -hmm. and you know what's your ideas of yeah. you know increasing that leave comments down below but yeah. basically it's frustrating it uh, is i personally have been pulling back a wee bit from 
from putting up posts on veganism except on our speaking up for the animals page because i don't want people to go oh it's just another vegan yeah. agenda but there is going to be some point where we are going to have to address this we're going to have to address the health impact the environmental impact and of course and most importantly for us the impact on the animals yeah. and i think that now is as good a time as any i think we have to rethink our forms of activism yeah, definitely um but i think, I think social definitely media has to be a, like, a big factor it has like, to be because everybody's on social media at the moment the majority i would think the reason why we've got a good vegan movement now and such a large vegan movement is down to mainly down to social media mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know what i mean i'm only a vegan now like seven years over seven years you know you're seeing six six, 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 six yeah. and if you look at that and obviously veganism be going from years to donald watson i think it is but who coined the phrase veganism, I think it was the 1940s, but the fact is veganism has been long before that. But if you look at the drip, drip, drip of the amount of vegans on the planet, if you look in the last 10 years, the momentum rolling, and I think it's coming from assuring content online, yeah. uh, information's getting out there. It's down to social media is probably the majority. So if that's the case, then maybe we should be looking at more forms of veganism, activism online and using this moment because we've got a captive audience that they're not out and about, they're actually online and maybe we should increase. The... And also I think people are getting terrified and switching off of the constant, there's nothing you can do, if coronavirus is taking over the world. What about posts, activists, posts that are saying, well actually there is something you can do? taking your power back, giving you con control, for want of a better word, and giving you a feeling that there actually is something you can do. And the very, very most important thing that we can do right now is to stop eating animals. Yeah. Stop 100%. it. Just stop it. Not bats, not strange, uh, non-food animals that we're used to here in the UK. All animals, all animals deserve to live. Yeah. And just leave them alone. And if you think that, you know, oh, nobody's going to change, even with fear of health, I would ask you, if you happen to like uh, nutritional yeast, or whatever your favorite vegetable is, like carrots. If you find out tomorrow that nutritional yeast or carrots is going to give you cancer or is causing cancer, uh, would you go and buy some? Would you go and purchase them? Or would you try something different? And I think that, you know, I personally, if I found out nutritional yeast or carrots <coughs> was going to give me cancer, will it be off my menu? It's as mm -hmm. simple as that. So if that works for that, surely it will work when we highlight the health issues mm -hmm. so let's let's not rule that out you can know? i ask one question before we go if you also find out tomorrow 100 percent proof that eating animals was causing this not anecdotal uh not it was a bat in china an actual proof that these um, diseases are being caused from animal to human consumption and you were um it was suggested that being a vegan could prevent all this would you go vegan? Yourself. And if yeah. not, why not? Why not? You selfish shit. <laughs> huh? You know what I mean? So guys, listen, thanks very much for watching. Please look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the animals. Uh, let's up our game here if we're vegan and get the information out there. Um, don't stop being active. Don't. You know, don't stop being active. There's other ways to get people to join the dance. Information is the key. 100%. You know, guys, send your love from Belfast. See you in the next video. See you in the next video. Bye.